I'm Adam. And I'm Tango. And this is Where There's a Williams, There's a Way. Hey Tango, what do you think about fish? Fish? What's got you thinking about fish? I was teaching my class about underwater creatures, and we spent the whole morning learning about different types of fish, like clownfish, angelfish, even the elusive blobfish. Blobfish, you say? Now that's intriguing. Are they as squishy as they sound? Yes, they are. Blobfish live deep in the ocean where the pressure is really high. Because of that, they have a gelatinous body that looks quite different from other fish. That's fascinating. I bet my horseshoe collection wouldn't be complete without a pair of fishy flip-flops. In today's book, a fish can't help feeling sorry for itself, so it's always pout-pouting. Let's get started. The Pout Pout Fish by Deborah Deason. Pictures by Dan Hanna. Deep in the water where the fish hang out lives a glum, gloomy swimmer with an ever present pout. I'm a pout pout fish with a pout pout face, so I spread the dreary wearies all over the place. Blub, blub, blub. Along comes the clam with a wide, winning grin and a pearl of advice for her pal to take in. Hey, Mr. Fish, with your crosstown frown, don't you think it's time to turn it upside down? Says the fish to his friend. Nice thought, Miss Clam. I hear what you're saying, but it's just the way I am. I'm a pout pout fish with a pout pout face, so I spread the dreary wearies all over the place. Blub, blub, blub. Along comes a jellyfish, he floats through the ocean, his tentacles all trailing in a gentle locomotion. Hey, Mr. Fish, with your daily scaly scowl, I wish you wouldn't greet us with a grimace and a growl, says the fish to his friend. Mr. Jelly, I agree. I'd like to be more friendly, but it isn't up to me. Even us horses have our moments when we feel sorry for ourselves. Really? What happened? One time when I was out in the field with the other horses, I couldn't find my favorite shoe. I was so upset. I spent hours searching for it, and I just couldn't stop thinking about how unfair it was that I lost my shoe. And that was it. I lost my shoe. I don't get it. Why were you so upset? I don't think you understand how much I loved that shoe. You're right. I don't understand. I don't love shoes like you. They're just something that I wear to protect my feet. But that's okay that we have different interests. There was another time when I felt even sorrier for myself. It was raining cats and dogs, and I had to stay in the barn all day long. I couldn't go out and play in the field, and I felt so cooped up. Oh, I can relate to that. Rainy days are the worst when my students can't get a chance to go outside and burn some energy, they turn into what, uh, were you going to say animals? Maybe. Don't worry, I'm not offended. I get it. I get a bit crazy myself when I don't get to burn some energy. I'm a pout pout fish with a pout pout face, so I spread the dreary worries all over the place. Blub, blub, blub. Along comes a squid, quite a slender, squiggly sight. She's squirmy, she's squelchy, she is slightly impolite. Hey, Mr. Fish, you kaleidoscope of a mope. How about a smile, a little joy, a little hope? Says the fish to his friend. Miss Squid, I would try, but I haven't any choice. Take a look and you'll see why. I'm a pout pout fish with a pout pout face. So I spread the dreary wearies all over the place. Blub, blub, blub. Along comes an octopus with eight great arms, covered on the underside with tiny sucker charms. Hey, Mr. Fish, let me tell it to you straight. Your hokey bokey soaking is an unattractive trait, says the fish to his friend. Mr. Eight, my chum, 
With a mouth like mine, I'm destined to be glum. I'm a pout pout fish with a pout pout face. So I spread the dreary worries all over the place. There was a time when I was a kid that I lost my favorite toy. I felt so sorry for myself, I even cried. I have my moments too. Remember that time when I got stuck in the mud and couldn't move? I felt so helpless and frustrated. Whoa, that is way worse than losing a toy or a shoe. Getting stuck like that could have been dangerous for you. Very true. But you know what? We both learned something important from those experiences. I learned to appreciate the things I have, and you learned to be more careful around muddy areas, right? You're right. It's all about learning and growing. Blub, blub, blub. Now along comes a fish in a silent silver shimmer. The gang has never seen before this bright and brilliant swimmer. She approaches Mr. Fish, but instead of saying hey, she plants a kiss upon his pouch and then she swims away. Mr. Fish is most astounded. Mr. Fish is just aghast. He is stone-faced like a statue, then he blinks and speaks at last. My friends, says Mr. Fish, I should have known it all along. I thought that I was pouty, but it turns out I was wrong. I'm a kiss kiss fish with a kiss kiss face for spreading cheery cheeries all over the place. So I'll smooch, 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 smooch. One day I was having a really tough time at school. Kids were being unruly and it felt like nothing was going right. I got so frustrated that I almost lost my temper. But then I took a deep breath and realized it's okay to feel frustrated sometimes. So instead of getting angry, I talked to the kids about how we all have tough days and how we can work together to make things better. That sounds like a valuable lesson, Adam. It's important to show kids that it's okay to feel emotions and that they can learn to manage them positively. I think it's important to show them that you're a person with feelings too. I used to get really upset. I'd stomp my hooves and get all worked up. But then one day, I realized that instead of getting mad, I could communicate my feelings. So I started nuzzling people and giving them gentle nudges. So you didn't start going around kissing people like the pout pout fish? No, that'd be weird. I thought so too. What wouldn't be weird is if you give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. I'm Adam. And I'm Tango. And this is Where There's a Williams, There's a Way. Did you know Blue Street Cleaner Wrasses swim into the gills and mouths of other fishes to remove and feed on their parasites? In some cases, their clients are fish who'd otherwise eat them. So to help appease them, the wrasses will often stroke their clients with their fins. Studies have shown that being stroked by cleaner fish is not only a pleasurable feeling for client fish, it also helps them to relieve stress, almost like a therapeutic massage.